Thank you. Thanks to the chairs for the invitation to be in beautiful Barcelona. It's a pleasure to speak about SBRT and the role of uh, colorectal metastases. My disclosures here. I'm going to describe SBRT for those of you who aren't familiar with it and then look at some outcomes of the uh, rapidly increasing literature on uh, SBRT in the setting of metastases. And finally, end with a few comments on appropriate selection criteria. I don't have to say too much about surgery given the past talks we've had, but clearly surgery uh, for metastases is standard of care and can lead to improved survival and cure of patients, even some of those who are not suitable for uh, chemotherapy. But not all patients are suitable for resection. Either patients have severe uh, medical comorbidities, underlying liver disease, or just too much disease um, to, to uh, go ahead with surgery. And even though outcomes are improving with different types of surgery, in fact, five-year survival rates of up to 60% in some series, most patients st still have ultimate recurrences. And in some of those patients, repeat surgery may not be an option. And perhaps novel local therapies can play a role. So there's no question an increasing role for non-surgical local therapies in liver metastases as patients are doing far better with systemic agents. I think the first indication for how we could use SBRT, and I think this falls with RFA as well, is complementary to resection. So a patient who otherwise can have an R0 resection with a small lesion that's not amenable to RFA or surgery. SBRT to that lesion could complement the surgery and hopefully um, improve prognosis for patients. The second bullet point is a little more controversial. So as the indications for resection or local therapy increase, and we're seeing more of this at least in, in my own uh, institution, where patients may have combined resection of liver metastases and metastases in the peritoneum or lung, the overall chances of cure are reduced. In patients who are progressive through chemo or have adverse uh, uh, mutant, uh, mutations, again, their prognosis is worse. There's a lower chance for cure. And in those patients who have oligoprogression or have perhaps a temporary CR in many of their metastases from chemotherapy but now residual disease, I think less well established how well we do with surgery. And non-surgical, less invasive therapies probably have an increasing role in these high-risk patients, either for toxicity or for higher uh, risk of recurrence after surgery. And preserving quality of life in these patients needs to be an important consideration. So SBRT refers to the use of highly conformal radiation dose distribution. The doses in general are, are potent, more ablative than what we use with conventional fractionation. We need to use image guidance and control breathing. It's a little technically challenging in the liver, but we have the tools to do this that are pretty uniformly available um, in developed countries. It generally refers to hypofractionation, although you actually can use these techniques in any fractionation that may benefit the patients. With the hypofractionated SBRT, it's convenient outpatient, there's less downtime for patients compared to conventional radiotherapy, and perhaps less interruption with systemic therapy in someone who uh, is uh, still a candidate for systemic therapy. This is just a picture of two immobilization strategies we use routinely in the clinic. The first is gentle pressure on the abdominal cavity to reduce the magnitude of breathing motion, and the other is breath hold. Patients treated with repeat 10 to 15 second breath holds for their imaging and their treatment. This is an example of uh, the many commercially available linear accelerators and treatment devices that have image guidance capabilities that are widely available. And in fact, we now have MR uh, linear accelerators in development that will probably be treating patients in the next year. So this is a summary of the first prospective studies of SBRT for liver metastases. The first studies were done in Europe. And small numbers, most included a proportion of patients with colorectal disease. Um, later, North American studies were done. And overall, um, despite different patients being included in these studies, the local control was generally good at a year anyway, more than 70%, even treating some patients with very larger or, uh, tumors. Survival isn't great in a lot of these studies, and probably because these were phase one studies or phase two studies in those patients who had extra hepatic disease or other adverse prognostic factors. And with time, although median survival is improving, I think that could be a combination of selecting patients most appropriately and also using our tools with radiotherapy a little more effectively. So we did a phase one, two study in our own institution looking at 68 patients with liver metastases that were refractory to or unsuitable for chemo, not resectable. Majority of patients had colorectal cancer. 
The median volume is shown there, 75 cc, but up to a three liter tumor, clearly not a curative situation. But on this phase one portion of the study was eligible for therapy. The median dose we used was 41.8 gray in six fractions with a wide range. We had very personalized uh, radiotherapy allocation to uh, aim to avoid or minimize the potential risk for toxicity. And at the end of the day, there was no grade three to five liver toxicity in this uh, cohort of patients. And in fact, as of 11, 2014, with more than 200 patients with metastases treated with the same radiotherapy uh, prescriptions, there was still no grade three to five liver toxicity. So very, very tight confidence interval showing that in fact, in the colorectal setting with non cirrhotic patients, we can give SBRT even to large tumors very safely. The majority of the responses are sustained. And this is shown here in the waterfall plot with the response at the last follow-up. Most patients initially had stable disease or a partial response, very unusual to get a complete response. There's almost always a scar if you look closely in the liver, even many years after treatment. And for most patients at last follow-up, the irradiated metastases continued to be controlled, not progressing. And in this initial study, we found the median survival of colorectal cancer patients was 14.6 months. This is a few years ago, remember. And these, again, were patients who were not suitable for any line of systemic therapy or refractory to their systemic therapy. Breast cancer patients did better than colorectal, but I'll show in, a, in subsequent slides, colorectal GI cancer patients do better than some of the other non-colorectal GI patients. We've updated our uh, outcomes and looked at 107 patients with 170 two tumors that were refractory to systemic therapy. And in this cohort, uh, the, the median survival is 18.1 months with a small tail. So a few patients out more than five years. And in fact, there are some patients out more than 10 years who had one to five liver metastases um, treated with SBRT with no systemic therapy after their treatment, showing the potential for this therapy to be ablative. Since we had an uh, individualized dose allocation, we could learn a little bit about dose response, and we in fact did find a dose response. So doses higher than 45 gray in six fractions, much more likely to control lesions than doses less than 30 gray. And we also evaluated quality of life. So this is a combined cohort of some of the uh, patients with metastases as well as some patients with HCC treated on our initial phase one and two studies. And the bottom line is there's a transient reduction in fatigue uh, and anorexia at four weeks, which returns to baseline and is sustained up to 12 months after their radiotherapy. Many of these patients don't have symptoms from their liver metastases, and hence we didn't see an improvement of their quality of life, but stability at, at 12 months. And I think as we have a lower chance of curing patients, we probably should consider always including uh, quality of life in, in our studies to learn um, how to improve quality of life, not just length of life for patients who are very likely to recur. This is a, a summary slide from a uh, phase one study at Colorado using a little bit higher, more ablative doses than what uh, we used in Toronto, six, up to 60 grain, three fractions. 47 patients, two year local control outstanding, 92%, median survival 20.5 months. And on the curve on the right upper, quadrant, you can see those, pa those tumors that were three centimeters or smaller had uh, no local recurrences, whereas the tumors that were larger than that um, still had excellent local control, but about a 15% chance of uh, recurring ultimately. They also looked at the tumor subtypes. This was not just colorectal cancer patients, and divided them into favorable and unfavorable tumor subtypes. And in fact, the favorable subtypes included breast and colorectal cancer. And not surprisingly, the non-colorectal GI, pancreas, biliary, et cetera, were not as likely to have uh, sustained survival. And in fact, if you look within the favorable, we now are getting more data to even subclass colorectal versus renal versus breast. In fact, colorectal is a little more difficult to treat than uh, some of the other tumors. This is a study from Italy, very high dose SBRT, uh, 75 grain, three fractions. And in this uh, cohort of patients, local control was uh, sustained 94%. Um, there's about half of patients had colorectal metastases. Median survival, not so good. But when you, in fact, look at this patient demographic, many had extrahepatic disease and adverse prognostic factors. So what about colorectal cancer? I think we need to work together and pool our data, and this is one of the first efforts in that regard. 
So combining outcomes of patients with colorectal metastases from three centers, including my own in Toronto, Stanford, and Colorado, there's 65 patients with 105 metastases. A mean dimension was uh, four centimeters, but up to 21 centimeter tumor. Again, some very large tumors. These patients were all unresectable. Prior chemotherapy in the majority, uh, median dose is 42 gray in one to six fractions. Survival at 12 and 18 months, 72 and 55 percent, with the only significant factor for survival being the presence of extrahepatic disease. And local control, a little worse than our overall uh, cohort, perhaps because these are all colorectal patients who um, take a little more dose to control than some other kinds of tumors. So 65 percent control at 18 months. And so for the conclusions from this uh, pooled analysis were that you should aim to treat patients with 48 to 51 gray in three fractions if possible for a 90% chance at local control, which is usually sustained if at that point. There's no level one evidence, very few comparative studies. This is one small, interesting, provocative study that looked at RFA versus uh, radiosurgery for salvage treatment of colorectal liver metastases. Only 30 patients. Um, the patients treated with RFA were matched to those treated with SBRT with respect to the number of metastases and the size of metastases. It was relatively low dose, uh, less ablative, less, less chance of long-term cure in this cohort, but much longer local disease-free survival with radiotherapy compared to RFA as shown there, 34 months versus six, but very small numbers, not prospective randomization but clearly um, suggestive that there, there could be a benefit and perhaps need for um, randomized compared trials. So some other data from University of Michigan, looking at outcomes of patients treated with SBRT versus RFA. 62 patients treated with SBRT, 127 treated with RFA. Again, not uh, randomized, but looking back at patients, the uh, freedom from local progression are shown in the following slide. So similar in RFA and SBRT, I think we can say SBRT is no worse than RFA for this, in this institution. And in fact, it looks like there's a trend for improved outcomes for tumors that were larger than three centimeters in the liver with a little higher local control with SBRT. So what about selection criteria? Well, for safety, there clearly needs to be enough liver reserve to uh, minimize risk of toxicity. We use greater than 700 cc of non-tumor liver as a cutoff. A focal tumor distribution, it can be bilobe or can be um, sometimes not easy to know just looking at diagnostic imaging until you actually try to plan a patient with radiotherapy. And ideally, tumors would be some distance away from luminal tissues that can limit the dose. From an efficacy perspective, clearly the smaller tumors are more likely to be controlled, but up to six centimeters, very good local control too, a little bit worse as we have tumors six to 10 centimeters or more. And the number of tumors, I think there's two factors. One, feasibility of delivering uh, ablative doses to a uh, large number of tumors, but also as there becomes more and more tumors, there's probably higher risk of microscopic disease and perhaps less uh, efficacy for a local therapy approach. So we generally treat off-study only up to five metastases in the liver. And clearly patients without extrahepatic disease are more likely to do better in terms of not just local control, but perhaps survival. And I suppose, as I mentioned at the beginning, it could be um, no extrahepatic disease versus controlled extrahepatic disease with another ablative approach. And you need to have radiotherapy technically deliverable. So just looking at some schematics of the, where the best locations are for SBRT, well, the lowest risk patients are tumors centrally, but away from luminal GI, ribs, and, and biliary tract. Low risk is superior lateral portion of the liver. A little bit theoretical increased risk is um, at the portal uh, confluence. There has not been any reported biliary toxicity from metastases SBRT that I'm aware of, but I think we need to be aware of that structure. You could have late toxicity many, many years after treatment. And finally, a uh, high risk would be uh, patients who have disease near their stomach and uh, other luminal GI tissues. And it's just purely a technical factor that we would have to limit the dose that's delivered to reduce the risk of uh, ulcers and bleeding and therefore a less chance of sustained local control. So what are the limitations? Well, with large tumors, there's less chance of local control, higher risk of toxicity for central metastases, even if that's more theoretical. Normal tissues often limit the dose, and I think we need to work together on strategies that can perhaps uh, help us uh, treat uh, tumors near luminal GI tissues more effectively. We need to hold systemic therapy for the most part now if we haven't uh, had studies to show safety. And I'm not gonna show the data, but I think we have to be very careful with uh, anti-angiogenic therapies and, and again, holding during the course of treatment. <clears throat> 
This is an example of a patient I treated uh, several years ago, 42-year-old man who had um, synchronous liver, liver metastases and colon cancer um, at uh, presentation. He was, had been treated with Fulfox and Fulfiria Vastin for uh, many, many months when I met him, and in fact it had two liver resections and uh, three RFA for liver metastases, and he had never had extra hepatic metastases. His primary was uh, uh, treated with surgery as well. So when he came to me, the central lesion um, had already been deemed unresectable and not, not ideal for RFA given its proximity to the vessels. And so we did treat him on our oligometastasis protocol. He received 45 gray and five fractions. We are limited in dose a little bit by esophagus. He cruised through treatment, did very well. But unfortunately, two years later, he did um, continue to have controlled liver, but developed a relatively nasty portal lymph node recurrence. Now, given he has an um, indolent history, he actually was taken to surgery uh, to remove the nodes, and, and knock on wood today uh, still doesn't have uh, progression, although I'm sure he's not uh, curative this, this time. So in conclusion, there's expanding criteria for unresectable colorectal liver metastases suitable for a non-surgical local therapy. And I think we do are having a little bit of a change in pendulum of, of trying to have patients treated not only with systemic therapy, but local therapies that can and control uh, the bulk of disease. There is a lack of level one evidence, and, uh, and congratulations to all those who did have been doing local regional randomized trials. There was one attempt for a phase three study in colorectal liver metastases in Europe, but unfortunately it had to close very early due to uh, poor accrual. So it's definitely a challenge, although I could perhaps think of some scenarios where there would be patient situations, certain situations that are high risk where we could conduct studies. SBRT is indeed an effective option for unresectable liver metastases, especially liver confined metastases. It's the preferred treatment, I would argue, at the portal confluence when tumors are intimately involved with the vessels. Best outcomes are if there are fewer tumors, less than six centimeters in size. Thank you very much.